Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and while I'm currently working on an update video to the Acer Thorn situation, I needed to provide a pre-update as you can readily guess from the title of this video. And no, that is not hyperbole in the slightest. Yes, Acer Thorn has named me as a defendant in his current lawsuit against Enclave Emily and Echo Wilder. Other creators that have been added alongside me are Kretosis, Just Emmy, Rogue Internet Man, and Sophian P. BB Fazy has also been added, although in BB Fazy's case, I actually feel that Acer Thorn very much has a case against BB, as that is the person that abused the DMCA to take down a great many of Acer Thorn's videos for no good reason whatsoever. And as much as I lack any on all respect for Acer Thorn, BB should never have done that. This document was apparently filed a month ago, which is a shame I didn't find out sooner, and his claims are as ridiculous as one might expect. So, I thought it would be interesting to share precisely what I will be sued for, discuss some basic facts, and what next steps will be. So please bear with me as we delve into the insanity that is an Acer Thorn lawsuit. Acer Thorn is claiming two acts of infringement against me, where the first is downloading a clip from his accidental livestream. In that, he states, During January of 2022, Sid Alpha received from Sophie and P a copy of the April 10, 2021 stream, which he then voluntarily accepted. I know he did this because he proceeded to make a video that included this clip, see Infringement 23. His use of the clip necessarily means he acquired possession of that clip, because duh. However, because he did not pay me the $20 per month needed to access it through authorized means, that means he necessarily acquired it through unauthorized means. So there are a couple of things here. The first is the most obvious, that Acer Thorne is factually inaccurate in who I obtained the clip from, as it was most definitely not Sophie and P. In addition, as I was acting in a journalistic capacity along with critique, my obtaining that clip from a third party is certainly nothing new. In emails between Acer Thorne and myself, which will be covered more in depth in the now nearly hour-long update video that is still in the process of being created, Acer Thorne cited his reasoning behind why my obtaining and subsequent use of that footage would fail fair use, and that citation was Harper and Rowe versus Nation Enterprises. That legal case surrounded former President Ford contracting a license agreement with Time Magazine to publish his as-yet-unwritten memoirs. An unauthorized source provided the Nation Magazine with a copy of those memoirs, which they then subsequently published. And within that lawsuit, Nation Enterprises eventually lost due to the fact that their publishing of three to 400 words of those memoirs were a direct commercialized attempt to quote-unquote scoop Time Magazine and enrich themselves by releasing that information before Time Magazine did. That legal case surrounds two core aspects. The first is right to first publication. The second is that it did affect and harm the potential market for Time Magazine's contracted license to release that information. Now let's keep those two tenets very firmly in mind as we go through the second allegation made against me by Asa Thorne where he says, On February 12th, 2021, Sid Alpha published a video where he heavily criticized me for my use of the DMCA to protect my copyrights. For the most part, the court may find the video overall to be fair use. However, at timestamp, 5216, Sid Alpha proceeded to use the Strange Noises clip from the April 10, 2021 stream. Even if we ignore unclean hands as a counter-defense to fair use, I believe his use of my clip in this case still falls short of the bar. While his playing of the clip begins at 5216, he begins talking about it slightly before then, at timestamp 5213. He describes the behavior as odd. That's it. That is where the totality of his criticism and commentary of this clip begins and ends. After he uses the word odd to describe the clip, he then plays the heart of the work without any visual or auditory obstruction whatsoever. And therefore, just like Kretosis' videos serving as a market replacement for the original. Once he had played the clip, he then abandoned all discussion of the clip itself and recommenced his previous discussion of my usage of the DMCA <laughs> takedown system, which he believed to be abusive. And I did. And I still do. He continues rambling on, attempting to explain to the judge why he feels that use fails the four factors of fair use before he then stating that he should be owed $20 for each view of my video, which at the time of recording that video has 90,947 views, which means Acer Thorne is claiming that I owe him $1,818,940, going up by $20 for each subsequent view. But there are a couple of things that Acer Thorne is conveniently ignoring in his foolish attempt to sue me here. His belief that Harper and Rowe vs. Nation Enterprises is foolhardy at best. Now, firstly, there is no arguing that Ace of Thorn, if he holds a copyright over his accidental livestream, already achieved and fulfilled his alleged right to first publication because, well, it was a livestream. It was already put out into the world by him. The second is harm to the potential market. 
Now, as Acer Thorn is an extremely small channel and he hides such content behind a paywall, I would need some sort of evidence to prove to me that he has been harmed in any appreciable way, as I seriously doubt very many of my own viewers would be willing to lobotomize themselves to the point where they would be willing to provide such an inept content creator as Acer Thorn with any money whatsoever. There is, however, a third decision point here. Now, let's talk about leaked information for a moment. Now, we all know that leaks within the games industry are rather common. It happened with The Last of Us Part Two. it happened with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and it has happened with numerous other games over the years. And I recall providing a breakdown of the Assassin's Creed video footage leaks on my own channel. And as such, news publications and YouTube channels have disseminated leaks for years as well. And yet, none of these corporations ever sue those publications for that action. And I seriously doubt Acer Thorne has ever questioned why. And while I know he's watching, I'll let him go and spend a few furious hours looking up a few dozen legal precedents that only tangentially relate to what he alleges. Why? And because I'm a cruel bastard like that. However, the clip used within my video was a very small portion of the original, which was over five minutes in length, where that clip was already heavily edited down from the multi-hour accidental livestream. Also, within the Sophie NP lawsuit, we already know that Acerthorn claims he did not make those noises, which we all know to be a blatant lie, and it will be fun to watch him twist in the wind over that one as well. Thanks to Leonard French, there are a couple of things that Acer Thorne is also failing to take into account. This from the H3H3 Productions lawsuit. They cite Google v. Oracle, stating, quote, In Google, the Supreme Court cited with approval two Ninth Circuit decisions for the proposition that intermediate copying, which would be my downloading of the clip, or copying as a preliminary step in the creation of a fair use work also qualifies as fair use. Now, of course, Ace the Thorn does not himself believe that my use of that clip was fair use, which I will be perfectly fine having my attorney permanently dissuade him of this very incorrect belief there. However, if the judge finds my video to be fair use under the second allegation made against me, then the first allegation automatically fails as a result. However, it gets even more fun further down, where he states, Even if he were correct in his argument that I cannot claim copyright of the recording of any noises I did not make myself, that still does the defendants only minimal good. Siddhartha argues that I have placed myself in a lose-lose situation, whereby in order to have a copyright to even enforce, I must admit to having made the noises myself, which in turn means I must publicly admit to being deranged. Not quite, but all right. It is actually the other way around. Because I have the registration for the copyright, that means I hold the presumption of copyright validity. To overcome this presumption, the defendants would have to insist that I did not make these noises, and once they do that, they've just admitted to defaming me when they called me deranged. No, that's really not how that works. So instead, it is actually the defendants, not myself, who have placed themselves in a lose-lose situation by embracing this legal theory for invalidating my copyright. He claims that I cannot claim a copyright on this recording because it was accidental is equally frivolous. His logic rests on the assumption that A, because it was accidental, it must be factual, and B, factual works are not subject to copyright protection. Now, in that, he's partially correct. Now, Leonard French, being an attorney, can never state in the definitive, but he had stated on Twitter that he believed that an accidental live stream might be considered a factual work as there is no intention of creativity there. Again, ultimately, that will be for the judge to decide, and facts are not copyrightable. This is, well, a fact. But Acer Thorne is correct insofar as a compilation of facts might be protected. From the Digital Media Law Project, quote, There may be a situation in which a compilation of facts may be protected if the creator of the original publication selected, coordinated, or arranged the facts in an original way. For example, a sports almanac may arrange baseball scores in a creative way, a genealogy chart may arrange birth dates in an original way, or a cookbook may arrange ingredients in a creative and original way as part of its recipes. In each of those instances, the creator of the work would have a copyright in the creative arrangement of the facts, but not the facts themselves. And then here is where we get even further into Never Never Land with Acer Thorne's requested relief. Now, he first asks that we be required to remove any infringing content from social media accounts and cloud storage. He then asks that all defendants submit our computers and phones for impounding so that they can have any of his content removed from them and to also remove any of his content from any website. He then requests maximum damages of $150,000 for the 23 alleged cases of infringement for a total of $3,450,000, followed by the ad revenue from the two Kretosis live streams, along with the ad revenue I made from my video. And then there is, once again, the $20 per view of my video, which totals over $1.8 million. He then is requiring that YouTube, Alphabet, Discord, and Twitch remove any of our content that he feels is infringing, which is an entirely redundant point, as his second demand is that they permanently delete our accounts and then wants the court to require them to take preventative measures to ensure we're unable to create new accounts. 
an idea that the attorneys representing the corporations in the Sophie NP lawsuit already smacked down hard, but a further breakdown of their absolutely delicious response to his demands will be covered in the update video. And so, there we have it. Some absolute insanity from Acer Thorn, who is, I feel, attempting to unjustly enrich himself at others' expense and being as spiteful and vindictive of a little shit as he can be. So here's what's going to happen. I will wait for Acer Thorn to actually serve me, which may well take several months. I have been in discussion with a quartering about possibly hiring Bill Richmond, an accomplished attorney, to handle this case. A discussion will be had about potential and likely costs, and then I will be working with a quartering to set up a GoFundMe to help cover the legal fees. And when we do eventually win, Acer Thorn will be countersued to recoup attorney's fees and, if possible, a written apology to all the creators he is attempting to harm through this lawsuit. Except for BB Fazy. Fuck that guy. Now, granted, countersuing someone like Acer Thorn for attorney's fees is a bit like trying to squeeze blood from a stone, given the apparent shabbiness of his living conditions. However, even if he has to sell off everything he owns and pays $50 a month for the rest of his damn life, I will make certain Acer Thorn knows what happens when you attempt to abuse the system as a method of unjustly obtaining wealth and attempting to destroy several channels at the same time. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.